Okay, sometimes we just need subtle papers, don't you think? Welcome back, friends. So why do we need subtle papers? Because we can't have everything like screaming busy, right? And sometimes we just need something a little quieter. Doesn't mean it's light, doesn't have to be light. Let me give you an example. This area is gray, gray on black, and that's quieter than some of these more vibrant colors here. It's, it's important that we have that. In this case, it was for contrast. Now, the contrast could have also been very light paper, and then the rest of the papers could have been really dark. So, or sometimes the contrast is really tiny pattern against bigger patterns. I want to thank everybody, all of my subscribers, all of you who, who watch a lot. If you haven't subscribed, then please subscribe. So in celebration for the 15,000 subscriber milestone, I want to give away this stencil. We're using it in this video, so take a look and then Stay tuned to the end and I will tell you how you can enter. Let's get started. So like I said, we're gonna work with the new stencil, but we're also gonna use with a little bit of this drywall tape. And I'm gonna to try to just lightly put in some subtle texture, maybe inside the circles or just in the background. And what we're gonna to do today is work with separate layers. So we're gonna put down some backgrounds first and then we're going to work with the positive and negative of the stencil. So most of the bottles that I have of paint are very rich in color and we want subtle. So I'm, I'm mixing up some paints here just to see maybe what inspires me and what I, you know, what I plan to do. So this is like a phthalo blue mixed with titanium white. The other one was quinacridone red mixed with uh, titanium white and then I have a Hansa yellow that's going to be mixed with titanium white. Now you need very little color to mix with the titanium white. You just need a speck. As you can see that yellow is way too dark. I probably need a lot less. Then I decide to mix with the blue just to see what kind of pretty green I get and I'm very pleased with that green color. So I'm going to take the, you know, this inspiration and I'm going to mix up some in a jar and then we'll just drizzle onto the plate. Okay, so we're going to start with a background and we're going to use Titan Green Pale. It's a delicate shade of green, like super subtle. And it's, it's a little bit of a muted green, but it has, you know, that sort of freshness and like a tranquil quality. I can't even like explain. It's like a calmness, a serenity. And so we're going to use that as our background. It's not, as you can see from the brayer sheet, it's really not a bright green at all. It's a much, um, much more subtle. It's like a sophisticated color, I think. So we're just going to make, um, a background here and I did have a little bit of paint on my on my plate and it'll probably pick up some of that but that's fine and uh, and then we're going to decide you know what we're going to put on top of that so as you can see I got a little bit of some of the from my previous session on here. So now I'm going to try just using titanium white for my next layer. I mean those, you know, the white on top of the green is really pretty so I thought but let's just give that a try. And I'm not registering my paper. I'm just, I'm winging it. This is um, collage paper 
anyway, so I don't really care if it's registered. So this is the first time I'm using this stencil, so I wasn't really sure what, you know, whether I was going to like, you know, that first print or the ghost. I wasn't really sure. Okay, so I'm just trying to make a little bit of texture in here. I'm using like the back of my spoon. Okay, so I'm going to wait for this to dry a bit, and then we're going to pick it up with either the Titan Green Pale or the Titan Buff. And then in the meantime, while we're waiting for this to dry, I'm going to mix up some other colors. So I really liked that green that I mixed that had both the Hansa Yellow and the Thalo Blue green shade. And um, just like mixing up enough, I think, to just do this session. And I'm also going to mix up a little bit of the um, the yellow as well. So as you can see, I'm doing just a, a little bit. If I was working on a large painting or something, I'd probably, I'd you know mix up a lot more paint, but. We're just going to do this one session with these colors so that no need. I want to make sure it's nice and pale, though, because the point really is to get tone on tone. So the white on the plate is dry now, so I'm going to pick up with the Titan Buff Green Pale. I mean, the Titan Green Pale. Um, and I think it'll be, you know, the other one was pretty, so... This, this should be nice. This is my first time using this stencil, so I'm not really sure how to work with it yet. You know, I have to, I always experiment. I'm definitely going to want two of these to work with side by side with negative space in the middle. I definitely want that. But I'm, you know... I think another layer needs to go on this other one. Maybe we just uh, overlay the stencil again. So I'm waiting about two minutes in between each pull. I want to make sure I get all the paint. If I wait too long, then the paper tears sometimes. Um, but two minutes is about the right time for fluid acrylics. Now that has a lacy kind of effect. So I think I'm going to call this modern lace. I was I was planning something else, but I'm thinking modern lace. Okay, so now I'm going to overlay the circle part like the inner part over this previous ghost print. Oh my goodness. So what ended up happening was it was offset just slightly. So it has a really subtle three-dimensional quality to it. They look like shadows. The green pale coming through looks like a shadow. So I'm going to now pick up, before this dries, I'm going to pick up the ghost that was left on the plate and overlay it on the on the one that just had the circles. But that really I am very very pleased with. I couldn't have planned that, but that's going to be great collage paper. Really really great. I'm just trying to visualize how like pieces of it could be used. But it would also make a great background. As you can see, I have really good coverage with my, my colors. So anyway, this was not using much color. This was just using white and Titan Buff and, and the Titan Green Pale. So we will see what it looks like when we go slightly more colorful. This is also very pretty, very, very subtle. The Titan Buff 
ghost over the titan green pale is very, very pretty. But that one is better, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, so we still have paint on the plate, but that's okay. We're going to just move on. We're going to use one of our uh, mixed colors. I'm going to create a background. So here's where you can really see that the green is so much brighter than the Titan green pale. You know, that one is a much, it's a muted, subtle color. And th this is a still a subtle color, but it's a much brighter green. So again, I wait two minutes for everything, including the backgrounds. Now my plate was a lot cleaner this time, so we got a really solid uh, combination of Hansi Yellow, Thalo Blue, and Titanium White. And that is a beautiful green. Okay, so here's the yellow that I mixed up. It came out very buttery color. It's Hansi Yellow and Titanium White. And it's like butter. <laughs> it's just a beautiful pale, pale yellow. It looks much stronger in the jar than it is on the plate. So when you mix colors, you sometimes have to like, you know, test them out to see how they're going to dry also because they're going to dry a little bit darker than they look when you, you know, when, when they're wet in your painting. Always keep that in mind. And we're getting nice, solid colors here. Okay, so we're going to lay down some more yellow. So I was going to lay that down and then I decide I'm going to pick that up with another sheet and then use the ghost over the, over the green paper. So I have to work quickly. Before it dries. And that butter yellow over the green should be beautiful. So now we're going to lay down some green. Just want to add some texture to the background before I do anything. So this is just going to put the circles on this yellow sheet. So we're going to have like a combination. We're going to have green circles on the yellow background. We're going to have yellow on, this, on the green background. We didn't get a clean pull on this, but I'm going to try to overlay that on this one.
so we do still have a lot of paper showing through so I might overlay this one again we'll keep it nearby okay so I'm thinking I want to overlay this one again but I might want to add a little bit of blue to that green just make it a slightly different shade see how little I added but it will make a huge shift it's a much bluer green now Okay, so I'm going to overlay on this one. I'm going to see if I can get that same effect that I got the last time, but with a different color combination. Not quite but it's still interesting. I didn't accidentally put down, now I'm gonna overlay that on this. So with this being single layers, we have to work fast. We have to make sure that the, um, the paint doesn't dry because we're not laying down some more paint to do the pull. So sorry if I didn't get to show you that quick enough, but I had to move fast. And I will show you everything at the end. Okay, so here's those two variations. I think I like the one on top better. Okay, so this sheet still needs something. I'm still going to keep it close by. I think it needs another layer. I just, I'm not sure yet what it, what it needs, but it'll come to me. So I'm thinking of using this mixture that I had um, doctored up a couple of weeks ago. It's a Payne's Gray mixed with titanium white. And I just wanted to lay it down there and wait for it to dry to see if maybe I need to add some more white to it. I think it's too dark. And I'm looking for a purple color. So, um, you know, I go back to my little palette and I'm trying to mix up some very pale purples. Uh, this one is like empty, dried up. So this purple that I do have is a little too red. I really wasn't happy with it. So I'm gonna mix up in this little container a little bit of the phthalo blue along with the purple to blue it up a bit because that way it'll go better with the um, Payne's Gray mixture. So I'm just gonna make sure like right now it looks a lot lighter than the Payne's Gray mixture, but I'm going to see how it dries. And then if it dries a little too dark, I'll have to add a little bit more white. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to at least lay down a background color with the Payne's Gray mixture. So this is titanium white and Payne's Gray, and it gets we get this nice bluish gray, like a, a really cool gray color.
Yeah, that's a nice pretty color. Okay, so we're going to try to use some of this purplish color that I mixed up here. On camera, it looks more blue. So I'm just going to pick this up as a background. So when you're making the subtle colors, you could sometimes have your slightly darker color um, as the background, and sometimes it can be the other color. Now, I'm really loving the way that green is peeking through and, the, and how it looks with that um, bluish-purple color. So that is inspiring me to do something with the green as well. So these are our two backgrounds. So like I said, always look at your brayer sheet because it kind of, as the colors are mixing over there and overlapping, you can get some ideas. Okay, so that was the uh, Payne's Gray that background that I'm putting over. Yeah, a nice combination, very nice combination. So now we have this, um, this is the blue, or uh, excuse me, it is the lavender, if you want to call it that, um, with the bluish purple, very pale. And I'm putting it over where it had the green and the um, Titan buff. And hopefully I'm going to get the result like I, like I saw on that brayer sheet. Yeah, that's nice. Not as subtle as what I'm really going for in this session, but it's pretty. I'll use it for something, I'm sure. Okay, so this is the, t the Payne's Gray mixture. It's kind of like a dusty gray. And I'm going to overlay that one again. And we got a little bit of that three-dimensional stuff going on again, so that was kind of cool. Just offset slightly, it gives a nice effect dimension. So we have a very light ghost here. It's almost like the outline of the stencil. The, sometimes the stencil picks up a lot of the paint, especially if you're, you know, rubbing too hard. I think I was rubbing a lot on that last print, so a lot of it pulled up. So as you can see, it's really subtle. So now we're going to go back to white. I'm going to pick this up with deli paper because I don't have enough white deli papers. And sometimes it's good to have a nice transparent paper that has a nice solid white. And I'm picking up a second time just to really clean the plate and leave me a nice ghost. But look at that nice deli paper. I 
And then I'm going to overlay that on this two shade Payne's gray and purple. Yeah, that's very pretty. So at the beginning of this video, I showed you that collage where I had the gray on black. And this is how I did it. So I took those same three colors, you know, the quinacridone red, the yellow, Hansi yellow, and the phthalo blue. And I mixed them up right on the plate along with a little bit of white to make a nice neutral gray color. So right now it's looking a little green. So I add a tiny bit more red and a little bit more yellow. And a little bit more white. And now we have more of a gray. And the reason why I do it this way is I, I like the variation in color. I, you see it's still a little bit of the blue. You still see a little bit of the red. And so I'm going to first pick up with deli paper because I want to leave the ghost. I don't know if you could see some of the variation. It was it was very subtle on this one. I didn't uh, I mixed a little too much, but anyway, we have a little bit of it on the plate. So now we're going to wait for that to dry, and we're going to pick it up with black. It dried pretty quickly, so I'm just moving along here. We're going to pick up some rice paper. Now, I'll leave all the links in the description below, like the paint that I'm using, the paper that I'm using, the deli paper that I'm using. I get questions all the time. and I always leave them in the description. So I know if you're watching this on a TV screen, it's a little hard to see the description, but um, just know that that's where my links are. So I was very disappointed with this. The black was just not black enough. The gray was a little too even. So I'm going to give it one more go. Because I want you to see just how fantastic it can be. I have dark, subtle papers as well as the light. So again, the black was very disappointing. So I decide, why not put two layers of black? So I go back to my black. I want that black to be solid. I have never done this before. And for some reason, the black just did not want to be very solid today. Now that's the black I wanted. I still have a little few white divots in there, but pretty solid. Okay, so we're going to go back to our combination of three colors and the white. I'm going to try to not mix them quite as well this time so that we get some variation in color. And 
and I'm just going to lay that right over the black. See what I mean? I, this is the kind of stuff that I like to get. There's little colors peeking through, but a nice, subtle paper. So now we have a ghost. And, and that ghost also has like those subtle, subtle colors in it. So I decided to pick up with the Titan Green Pale. And I don't think I waited long enough for it to dry. So I could already tell that some of the paint is mixing with the gray and it's kind of muddying up the green pale a bit. And so it gives me even a more neutral color than I was expecting. And I also love this sheet and the dimension that I see there. So I saved that. So this turns out to be one of my favorites from this session. I love the subtle colors in here. Absolutely love it. All right, let's recap. This was one of the very first ones. And the second print, when we did some, you know, swapping back and forth, um, this was the second print. Let me go this way. I'm loving, loving, loving this one, but I don't hate this one. So they're both really good examples of the subtle kind of papers that sometimes we need. On the light side, but that's fine. Super neutral, super subtle. Some nice texture. Okay, then we, we mixed up some colors. And we mixed up a really pale buttery yellow, a really pale green, and then I added some blue to that green. That thalo blue. And I'm leaning more towards this one. But, you know, when I'm in the mid, when I'm looking for papers for collage, you never know what I'm going to want. So this, this grunginess here might appeal to me at the time that I'm working on a collage. So they're both, I'm, I'm happy with both of these. Okay, next, I decided I was going to try the Light Payne's Gray. Okay, how did we do this? Let's see. I had a, I think I did these two first. And this was, this was the paper that I just kept picking up um, and then decided to put the purple over it. And I love it with the green. It's, it's beautiful. And I love the three-dimensional quality of it. But these were the two that I was actually aiming for. Both a bit grungy. This one, in its real super simplicity, I love it. It's more of an outline. Um, but this is also very good. Very happy with both of these. This was like um, a third one that I did. And then I put white over it. And you could see through the white. So, yeah. These are fun. This one's a little lacier, so I kind of like it. I think, I think of the three, I like this one the best. And I got a bonus paper. White Deli. That will definitely come in handy. So then, let's see. Oh, this was another deli from that, from that grouping previous grouping. Why not, right? So this was the first dark print that I did. And the gray was almost entirely gray except for this area right here with the red. 
Um, I mixed it a little too much, I think, and the black was not black enough. Um, I did get this great deli paper as a secondary paper, but even this is a little too, like you don't see enough, enough variation in color. So when I'm mixing a gray, I like to see the variation in color. Like here, this is, you know, you see the other colors that are making up the gray. And, um, and that on top of the solid black, if you recall, I did two layers of black to get that real solid color. And if I use it in collage, I might even like touch up with a little bit of paint in the areas where I didn't have solid, solid. And then this was the result of, you know, the ghost also having these very subtle colors all throughout and on this very neutral paper. So it, you know, it's just really, really beautiful. It reminds me of, uh, there was an artist here in Fort Lauderdale. His name was Nolan Hahn. And he did these amazing paintings of concrete walls. And from a distance, they looked like they were all just like shades of gray and black paint. But when you got up close, you saw color like this. And that's what, that's what this reminds me of. It reminds me of him. Miss him terribly. He was, he passed away about two years ago. And, uh, he was definitely a big loss to this community. But anyway, that, re that reminds me of him. So thank you for stopping by today. Or <clears throat> thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you understand why I say it's important to have these subtle papers. And this was not quite so subtle, I guess. But it's still one of my favorites from this session. But, you know, we have some interesting things going on with this uh, with this new stencil of mine. And uh, don't forget to check out that comment below, which tells you how you can win this stencil. So per, I'm this close to 15,000 subscribers, and that's going to be in celebration of that. So don't forget to enter the contest. Look in the comments below. And don't forget to create, inspire, and share. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you for staying till the end. So to enter, to win, I'm going to have three winners. And I'm going to choose them randomly. I have a little software that does that. But all you have to do this time, we're not going to do the emoji because a lot of you couldn't find it the last time. So this time we're just going to do hashtag stencils and put that in the comments below along with a comment if you want but then you will be randomly entered into this contest and three of you will win i will be announcing the winners in the comments on this channel within probably four days after the video has posted so i'll be posting a pinned comment with the winners so definitely come back and check to see if you won. Thanks for watching and don't forget to create, inspire and share. And I will see you next time. Don't forget to enter. Bye.